All right, here we go. We're following some breaking news from Great Britain uh, on the health of King Charles. So we are learning uh, that the king, uh, during a recent hospital visit for a benign procedure, uh, I'm sorry, for, for when he was uh, under surgery for his prostate uh, cancer, they found uh, another form of cancer that we, he has now started regular treatments for. Uh, CBS foreign correspondent Ramey Innocencio is in London uh, for more. Ramey, what can you tell us about this uh, diagnosis. Um, of course, he just underwent surgery. Now it sounds like there's another form of cancer. The fact that they're sending uh, this kind of communication is this, how serious could this be? Lilia, hi there. Yes, and just to clarify, uh, the initial procedure that King Charles went under uh, last week for which he was uh, discharged is not cancer. That was for a procedure for benign prostate oh, enlargement. Enlarged. Unfortunately, the news is now different, as we've just gotten in the past few minutes. As they were doing that procedure, that uh, uh, for uh, his benign prostate enlargement, they said a separate issue of concern was noted. I'm reading from the statement from Buckingham Palace, which is just uh, uh, past the embargo. They said that subsequent diagnostic tests have identified that as a form of cancer. He will continue, though, with his state duties, but he will step back from public engagements. Uh, Buckingham Palace also says that His Majesty has started a schedule of regular treatments, and he has also been advised by doctors to postpone any of these public-facing duties to avoid the public, to avoid public interaction. Uh, but throughout this period, they say that His Majesty will continue to do state business and official paperwork as usual, but again, to avoid any public interaction uh, during this uh, time where he is being treated for cancer. So, Ramey, a few things uh, leap out to me in this statement. First, they, they say that the, 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 they want wanted to, uh, to release it to avoid speculation into the health of the king. But, of course, speculation is going to follow because all, all we're being told is that the cancer is a, quote, form of cancer. Right, right. Uh, it doesn't get more specific yeah. than that. And then there's something to be read into the fact that he will cease, on advice of doctors, public-facing duties. However, he will apparently continue to be handling state business as usual. That's quite a needle to thread. Not in good enough condition to meet and greet the public. It's a very public role. A big part of it is leading in words and, and appearances, but but in good enough health to handle the paperwork side of things. I mean, I, I wonder if it has to do. I mean, if, if if it is cancer and if he has to undergo a chemotherapy or something that will have some consequences where you can you know see him debilitating physically. It's something that maybe uh, they they want to make sure to keep him away from the public, or maybe it's too exhausting to to, to do the public facing duties. But you know his mind yeah. is fine and he can still work. It could be, Ramy. What do you know about his uh, health uh, leading up to last week's in uh, prostate procedure and and now this? I mean, is he wh where was he and and what do we know about where he might be heading? Sure. Well, the the first uh, public. Uh, engagement that he had was at a church service yesterday uh, in Norfolk at uh, uh, the church on the estate of Sandringham, uh, the St. Mary Magdalene Church. That was the first time since he was discharged from, uh, the, uh, from the hospital since this time last week. He was seen with Queen Camilla, uh, but prior to that, he was um, just leading a very uh, private life of the prior days before that. Um, Prior to that, though, uh, there has been no at least public talk about the king's health when he was prince as well. Uh, the idea here is that uh, anything was kept very close to the vest or that he did not have much to speak of at all. Can Looking um, at, okay. his, uh, at his family, uh, well, right now King Charles is 75 years old. His father, Prince Philip, uh, uh, died at the age of 99, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, of course, who we just uh, uh, followed in her funeral, uh, his mother, 96, and yeah. the Queen Mother, uh, his grandmother, lived to the age of 101. So King Charles, at 75, uh, has uh, potentially years ahead of him if he were to follow in the footsteps of his father and Ramey, as well as his mother. Do we know if, if this may, means that Prince Charles would be taking over those public-facing duties? I mean, I, I assume that the Crown will have an interest in continuing to, to attend to important uh, events or, or just ha have somebody out there from the royal family uh, taking over these duties. You know? Sure. Uh, 
at this current stage in, in what we know, uh, all we know from Buckingham Palace, and they're very uh, specific in their communication to the public and to the world, all we know is that they're stressing that uh, King Charles will continue to undertake state business and official paperwork as usual, but again, to postpone those public-facing duties. This may be uh, a conversation that has already been had uh, between the members of the royal family and who, if anyone, might uh, take up public-facing duties. But Lydia, at this point, we, don't, we just don't know. All right. Uh, because, uh, or, or owing to the fact that at this point there is so much that we don't know, Ramey, uh, I'm, we're going to let you run down your sources, try to find out uh, what you can. Uh, CBS News Royal contributor Amanda Foreman is with us now over the phone. Uh, Amanda, talk to us about one thing we've been wondering here is, well, actually, we can see you, not over the phone. Thanks for joining oh, there you us go. in the flesh. All right, Amanda, we are, we were wondering, you know, who can take over these public-facing duties? I would imagine uh, that Prince William would have that. Uh, we were just listening to our partners at the Weather Channel, I mean, uh, the BBC, um, talking about uh, Camilla and her prominent figure. Um, but, but I know that the the king has advocated for a slimmed down monarchy. Uh, what would that mean given an incident or an event like this one where he cannot present or, uh, or, or face the public in, his, in those types of duties uh, and who could take over those roles? Well, this is exactly what uh, Princess Anne, the Princess Royal, had feared. It was one of the things that she said very openly a couple of years ago, that she disagreed with the idea of a slimmed down monarchy because one never knew when there might be a catastrophic event that prevented not just one, but several royals from doing their job. And, and unfortunately, her words proved to be prophetic. The, the slimmed-down monarchy that, Prince, that when Prince Charles was Prince Charles, before he became king, isn't the slimmed-down monarchy that we have today. He never imagined that, that the Duke of York would be uh, no longer a member of the, of the working royal family. He never imagined that his son, Henry, would no, Harry would no longer be a member of the working royal family. So this, this is unprecedented in the 1,000-year history of the royal family to have so many important key figures of the royal family out of action at the same time. You know, Amanda, we just heard our partners at the BBC talking about how they got more information in this health announcement about the king than they might have under prior, than they might have thought the palace would be willing to, to release. What do you make in general about the, the statement we have and also what we don't have uh, and, and what, what the palace might be thinking as the whole world dives into a discussion of the king's very intimate parts and his prognosis? Well, there's two things to bear in mind. The first is that the palace will have had some time to prepare this statement. It's not like we're getting this in real time as they are getting the news as well. So they will have known that things were up and they will have had some, at the very least, a few days hmm. that there was, a, there was a, a medical emergency. And it, it may be that the timing of the Princess of Wales's operation could have been pushed up ahead because of this, we don't know. But, but so the, the palace almost never does this kind of thing on the hop. It will, it will have been planned. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is that you are right. Uh, there are lots of things that we, we don't know. And in fact, by being this open, which is part of King Charles's modernizing strategy, it does also warn the public that there may be more bad news ahead. That was one thing that, that we were speculating, and of course it's we can only speculate at this point, we don't have enough information, but in talking about how uh, Harry is, is uh, heading over to visit his father, uh, Prince Harry, and, and how, you know, how serious would that be uh, in terms of what kind of indication of how serious the, the cancer might be. Um, talk to us a little bit about, you know, how much can we assume given that that relationship with the royal family in general has been so fractured? And, and what were the latest, I guess, developments in terms of, of that relationship? Well, I, I, as we know, that, that relationship has not mended in any appreciable sense mm. in, the, in the last year. 
but now we are at an inflection point. Uh, the royal family's at an inflection point, but so so are um, Harry and Meghan's relationship with the public at an inflection point. Because whatever differences that exist within that family um, at a life crisis. The public, indeed any family, expects everyone to come together, to put their differences behind them, to work towards reconciliation, and to pull together. And any sign that there's an unwillingness to do that will have repercussions, and not good ones for Prince Harry and Meghan. And, and um, in terms of who could take over those public-facing duties, um, engagements, uh, do you suppose that that will go to Prince William now? Well, yes. Yeah. So there are still senior members of the royal family, as our uh, colleague at BBC said, uh, in particular the Princess Royal uh, and Prince William. Uh, the, the older generation are somewhat too old at this point, the Duke of Gloucester. They, they, you know, they, they, it would be a strain on them. Um, but the, Prince Edward and uh, Sophie, they, they're very popular royals and they can step forward as well. But after that, it's slim picking. Um, we want to make sure, right, to uh, inform the public who is joining us now. Well, the breaking news is what we know from uh, the palaces that King Charles has some form of cancer. That they, it was discovered through a procedure. They were they were checking out his enlarged prostate, which, according to Dr. Avis, is something a, a pretty normal to happen to, to men after a certain age. And they have discovered a separate issue, which is uh, the finding of cancer. What type of cancer? We do not know. Well, the, they have not. With the, Dr. Agus, his, his, as a cancer doctor himself, his hypothesis was that the standard procedure that you undertake for an enlarged prostate would remove specks of the prostate, which then, under the normal course of things, would be looked at. And most times they're looked at, everything's okay. In this case, and this is his speculation, as a doctor in the field, right. they might have uh, discovered some form of cancer. What is also unknown... Again, the, whether it's prostate cancer or not, unknown, but that's the theory. And we don't know what type of screen. I mean, given that this is a, the king and he is 75 years old, they might have done a full check they on might him have, as they part might of have, that. And they might have. They might have. Um, we don't know. But do we yeah. still have Amanda? Is Amanda listening to this ramble and hoot? Okay, so uh, I, I'm curious. The, the decision to announce cancer but leave it only as a, quote, form of cancer, which on the one hand is transparency, but on the other hand, invites rampant speculation. So if you want to tamp it down, this only really increases it. What do you make of that decision to use that very particular phrase, a form of cancer? I think that, that in my professional opinion, that is a warning to expect more news mm. and not positive news. Wow. That's what I make of it. Wow, okay. Um, so they're not known to be this transparent. This could be an indication of some something that is that is greater. It's not, as you were saying, it's not normal that they would come out and say, look, the, the, the release, the communication from the palace says today he is beginning treatment. Yeah. I mean, he just underwent that procedure a week ago. So the fact that they are rushing to or communicating is either an indication of extreme transparency, what you're saying is not typical of the royal family, or uh, a sign that there is more news to come. Yeah. Well, I, I, Amanda, and you're, you're, that's your professional opinion. I want to underscore another aspect of uh, Dr. Agus's professional opinion as a, as a cancer doctor. He, he said that the, the radiation treatment, which would be done Monday through Friday for seven to eight weeks, um, the, 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 the unknown, the variable that the public does not know, is how aggressive this type of cancer is, wherever it is in the body. And there's something called a Gleason score, which will only be known to the royal family and their doctors. And that is the, that, that score will tell you the prognosis. That will tell you how uh, assertive this cancer intends to be in the life uh, of King Charles uh, and how hard the fight will be. Um, so yeah, we, we really have not a lot to go on at this hour. Um, and it's interesting, your professional thought that more bad news could be to come it does dovetail with Prince Harry flying back. Uh, I wonder, you know, 
the psychological component of healing is big. It's something that Dr. Agus also talks about. Uh, it's a family fight when a, a loved one has cancer. What is the health in general, if you had to give a health score to the family life of the royal family with all that is going on, things that we hear, things that we talk about? I mean, you've been following it more closely than any of us. Yes. Well, the one of the things that happened the last time the royal family had a major crisis, what the Queen Elizabeth had called the Annus Aurebilis, when the, her children were getting divorced, Windsor Castle had a terrible fire, there was a huge row about her taxes. And uh, there was so much fragmentation then, people were talking about monarchy falling apart, splitting apart. But actually what happened was that after the initial shock, they really drew together and became stronger, uh, amazingly stronger, and actually also sacked some people, hired some people, and so it was a kind of clean sweep. And my understanding is that this has also been going on in the last few months as well. That that they've had a they had a they had a terrible time, but at the same time, that as often happens, it's been a springboard for a spring clean, a get together talking more and and working together better. And actually, you, you can see this in the way they have parceled out their duties, in the way that they often now coordinate their activities, even in little tiny, simple uh, um, signs. How many times do you see the royal women wearing outfits that complement each other? So you can see that there's quite a deep level of coordination going on now, which didn't used to happen quite so much. Well, de deepening the mystery here, and, uh, and this is a, a, a tangential, back to the prostate cancer conversation, Dr. Agus had that theory that it might be prostate cancer based on how it would be discovered on the enlarged prostate procedure. But the palace is saying, according to our partners at the BBC, and forgive me if I missed this conversation earlier, they are saying it is not prostate cancer. That oh, they're is already confirming it is not, because the initial statement yeah. said a separate, they made sure to say, it was a, a separate, separate issue, issue concern. of concern was noted. Boy, okay. So we, now, now they're being more specific, perhaps, in their communication. Uh, wow. and, and that is something important because, I mean, people will speculate. Uh, people will want to know more. They will begin assessing the seriousness of something. And, of course, we were talking, if it is prostate cancer, there's so many treatments that are available. Uh, there is so much that can be done. The science is, is at a certain place. And so that gives a great deal of hope, uh, as is the case with, with a cancer diagnosis in any family. But if it is not, and we don't know what it is, who, who knows? Who knows? Very. Um, yeah. And, and it might be in the best interest of the royal family to actually be forthcoming and transparent and, and let the people know exactly what kind of prognosis we're yeah. talking about. Uh, Amanda Foreman, Ramey Innocencio, Dr. David Agus, our partners at the BBC, thank you all for helping us navigate this uh, breaking news. King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer. Buckingham Palace did not specify what type of cancer, but said Charles uh, has begun treatment. The king's diagnosis comes about a week after he was treated for an enlarged prostate. For more on this, we bring in CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent, Dr. John LaPook. Jeff. Uh, John, always good to see you. Um, okay, so we know, they said it, he was treated for a prostate issue, but right. this is not prostate cancer. Right. What did you make of the statement they put out? Yeah, so um, this was a cancer. They don't say what kind of cancer it was or where it was found. Should we be asking how, that question? What is it? What well, kind of cancer? You know, this is the back and forth about, you know, how much are, are the, do they want to share with the public and how much is, are they entitled to in terms of privacy? But it was found, obviously, unexpectedly. They went in there to do this procedure on the prostate. It was benign prostatic enlargement, in which very common benign condition. They had said beforehand uh, that there was a, uh, it was benign. And in fact, the palace did say that this is not prostate cancer. Right. So, you know, where is it? I mean, it's a matter of speculation. And in fact, I read the, the statement from the palace, from Buckingham Palace. They said, please don't speculate on the cause, you know, and okay. you, you, you know, they, they, want, they want their privacy. But of course people will. Yeah. I'm not saying we will, but it's, that's the next logical question. So they have to calibrate how they want to respond to that yeah. and, and, and deal with it. The only thing I will say is that the prostate, you know, for people who don't know, the prostate's a small organ. It's right. sitting right underneath the bladder as part of an operation to treat an enlarged prostate. 
typically you will examine the bladder now, but we have no idea if, if that was involved or anything at all like that. You say the, the, it, it's good news that he wasn't symptomatic of something necessarily. Yeah. Like he didn't go in because he was in extreme pain. They found this while they were doing something else, which is a good sign. Yeah, you know, th these things that are found incidentally, almost accidentally. I mean, it was accidentally. They went in to do one thing and they found another thing and it turned out to be cancer. And if it wasn't causing so many symptoms, they were having findings or something on a test that they would find it and be suspicious of it beforehand. You wonder if it was, you know, at a generally early stage. So it might be a lucky thing that they tripped over this diagnosis. They didn't expect it. But if it's at an early stage, generally the earlier something is found in terms of cancer, uh, the better the prognosis. The palace right now has got a million different people telling them how to handle this right. and deal with all of this. They don't care what, what we think. Certainly not me, maybe you as an expert on this. How would you proceed trying to, you know, this is a family issue and, and there are privacy concerns, but also as a way, I know you, because we've talked about this before, about awareness right. and, and helping others who may be going through something similar. Right. If, if they would ask my advice, which they have not, uh, my, my preference would be for openness here because these are great opportunities to increase awareness, not just of the general concept of the king has cancer, but what kind of cancer? And there are so many people, obviously, who are suffering from cancer. I've treated so many people over the years. Mm -hmm. But whenever a celebrity, somebody who's well-known, comes out and does a procedure mm -hmm. or has a diagnosis, it increases awareness. And then you tend to see an increase in screening, yep. increase in people going to their caregivers and asking questions. And that's only good. So, I mean, if it were me, I would say, look, um, we all have bodies um, I know there are parts of the bodies that we're more squeamish about than others, but I think th this is a no embarrassment zone. You don't want people dying of embarrassment. And I think wherever it is, whatever it is, um, they should, I, I would prefer that they share that so that we could use it as a, a teaching moment. Because you're right, 50 years ago, we probably wouldn't know anything about what was going on. No, and in fact, you know, you and I were talking beforehand about that there's a long history of celebrities, of politicians, of well-known people hiding their illnesses. Woodrow Wilson had a stroke while he was president and hid that. Uh, we, we know that JFK, uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, had Addison's disease, which is a lack of adrenal hormones. And uh, President uh, FDR, Roosevelt, um, had polio. You, you rarely were able to, to see that he was in a wheelchair. So, you know, this was hidden. It was, uh, and now I think it's just been a great uh, trend to make these things public. And every time, I've been involved in so many of them, Every time we, we do something publicly, uh, we increase awareness. You know, Ryan Reynolds came to me and said, would you do a cost screening colonoscopy, right? Mm -hmm. We found a polyp. We found a benign polyp um, that was, you know, you find yeah. the polyp and, and, it's, and it's cured. It doesn't have a chance. It's completely benign. It had the opportunity over years to turn into cancer, but instead the person doesn't get cancer. Do you know that screenings went up dramatically That's afterwards? Great. Afterwards, Something Ryan Reynolds and I have in common. You've, you've performed colonoscopies <laughs> on both of us, I think. <laughs> and Not to get too much into yeah. the, now, the weeds now, here, but the, there the, you go. There's the, me. I, I noticed that Jeff Glore <laughs> smile when I said, I say, why is he smiling about this, this Ryan Reynolds story? Why but, am I talking But about I have this? to say this yeah. for HIPAA reasons, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ryan came to me. I never would go to a patient and say, because there's a power structure, say, do, would you do a colonoscopy? Yeah. And you just outed yourself as yeah, my I did. Patient. I came because so, I, I came, didn't. Yeah. I didn't do that. No, no, I'm, I'm I, clean. I, I, I'm, that's why. I'm, that's why I'm saying I'm acknowledging it as much. So um, I think be open, be public. You know, get the word out there, and people learn, and it saves lives. It saves it, lives. I, it, it, it absolutely does. Um, John, Jeff, Laura. Great to see I'll you. I'll have to see when you do. I, I'll, <clears throat> yeah, you're probably going to tell me <laughs> I have to come in now, <laughs> like in the next few weeks. All right. Prince Harry has arrived in the UK following his father's cancer diagnosis. King Charles and his wife, Queen Camilla, were seen in public today for the first time since Buckingham Palace announced his diagnosis. A statement says the cancer was identified during a procedure for an enlarged prostate. Officials did not specify what type of cancer it is. CBS News foreign correspondent Ramey Innocencio has been following the story since this advisory came out. Uh, Ramey, let's start with Prince Harry. He isn't in the UK too often, of course. What more do we know about the visit and uh, what are you gathering from his quick trip there?
Yeah, uh, well, Lily, a British media were tracking the Duke of Sussex from California this morning. Uh, his black Range Rover was spotted at Los Angeles International Airport, arriving at a private terminal. He then landed at London's Heathrow Airport around lunchtime here, and then he went to Clarence House. And that is the royal uh, residence where King Charles was. And that was actually the first time that the father and the son were in a room together since the king's coronation, which, as it turns out, is exactly nine months ago today. Now, it appears that they spent no more more than an hour or so together because then the prince's vehicles were seen leaving Clarence House. Uh, the king then left for Buckingham Palace and then since then he's left London for Sandringham Estate in Norfolk. But ultimately, a Harry's visit here, Lilia, is being seen by many as potentially rebuilding bridges that we know have been burned uh, over the past few years. Mm. And Ramey, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak gave somewhat of a hopeful message saying the doctors caught Charles's cancer, or King Charles's cancer early. Should we expect to get to get more updates from him or from the palace throughout his treatments? Yeah, and uh, notably, Rishi Sunak said that he was uh, thankful in that statement and that it was caught early, which is something that he maybe let slip a little bit that hadn't been shared by Buckingham Palace uh, about updates for King Charles's treatment. Uh, with the palace, really, we shouldn't expect uh, anything. Royal watchers continue to say this. There's nothing the palace feels that it ever really needs to do. But in this case, where the king decided to go public, he has decided to help to normalize the conversation around cancer at any time, really, right? There's someone famous who gets diagnosed with cancer or any disease that really often encourages people to get checked. Um, I suppose that if or when the king's health changes, hopefully uh, for the better and not for the worse, uh, that the palace may make an update. But again, we really shouldn't expect anything anytime, let alone uh, anything regular. Certainly, that awareness is important, and of course, one can expect that uh, transparency increases trust. Ramey Nascencio, yeah. thank you. Well, Britain's King Charles has undergone his first round of cancer treatment. Officials still haven't said what kind of cancer it is, though. We are learning that the king's younger son, Prince Harry, did pay his father a short visit. It marks the first time the two have seen each other since the coronation nine months ago. CBS News senior foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett is following this from London for us. Uh, so, Charlie, uh, let me ask you about Prince William, uh, the other son, uh, who is returning to public duty today uh, since his wife, the Princess of Wales, underwent abdominal surgery. Uh, do we expect him to be at more events now that his father is undergoing this treatment? Uh, Vlad, it's a good question. It's a question that we asked our own palace sources as to whether he's going to have to sort of step up and fill in not only his own duties, because he's very busy as, as it is as a working royal, but filling in for his father's duties. And these things are really carefully uh, managed in terms of their schedules. Now, what we saw today was the first time, as you said, the first time we've seen him um, back on, on the job, as it were. Uh, since January 18th. So it's been a few weeks that he's been away looking after his wife who had that abdominal surgery. So he's at an investiture that you can see there. Uh, King Charles would have been doing that. So in that particular situation, that would have, that is filling in for King Charles. Um, tonight, he's going to be at a charity dinner, which is on his own schedule. And we believe then he will actually make his first public comments about uh, his father, maybe not necessarily revealing any of the treatment, but it'll be the first time he'll be speaking about his father and the diagnosis itself. Meanwhile, his father has gone up to um, Sandringham. Uh, he left, in fact, I was there outside of Buckingham Palace when the helicopter took off, taking him to Sandringham uh, from Buckingham Palace. He had been staying at Clarence House, which is actually, you've been here, it's just around the corner from Buckingham Palace, and that's yep. really his London residence. Uh, but he and Queen Camilla went to Buckingham Palace yesterday afternoon and then flew away. And you said a short visit, a really short visit. It was like 45 minutes. And this is after, you know, an 11 hour flight from LAX to London Heathrow, another hour or so to get to Buckingham Palace. And then it was a 45 minute meeting. And genuinely, a few minutes after that, Charles and Camilla were seen leaving uh, Clarence House to go to Buckingham Palace and off they went and Harry remained. And so do we know if there are any plans for Harry to perhaps meet with his brother? And Maria, it doesn't look that way. Now, mm -hmm. sources told us yesterday that that wasn't going to happen. So when we get this, we get it from, you know, qualified sources because it has been out in the media anyway. But yes, we confirmed that Prince William, in the words that it was described, had no plans to meet with Prince Harry. And I can add to that. I can update that because there are a couple of reports out just a few minutes ago 
that Harry may have already left had gone to the airport on his way back to L.A. So wow. if there was a question that he was going to meet with Prince William, certainly the recent reports suggest otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I guess uh, we're still, Charlie, it's interesting. We had a conversation yesterday with Roy Anika, who you know very, very well, who's a, mm. a contributor to CBS News, covers the royal family, um, and others who appeared on our air. And, and there was a question of transparency when it comes to uh, the way the palace is framing this. On one hand, they're being upfront about the fact that the king has cancer. On the other, they're not telling us exactly what kind of cancer is. So in my head as a journalist, I'm like, yeah, yeah, transparent light, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because we want to know, because I think people want to know what kind of cancer it is. And if it were not serious, this is the question that everybody has. If it were not serious, why wouldn't they just tell us? Yes, you know, transparent light is a good way to put it, Vlad. If anything, it's the, we're seeing a, sign, a kind of transparency that we didn't even see, see under Queen Elizabeth. And I was listening to the radio um, yesterday, and I learned that Charles's grandfather not only weren't the public um, informed that he was suffering from lung cancer, but the king himself wasn't informed that he was suffering from lung cancer. So we have moved on in a couple of generations. And I think um, in speaking to, to our friends, including Roya, what they're saying is, yes, it would have been noted that he had stepped back from public service, and then there'd be all kinds of questions, and then they'd have to play catch-up to exactly what was going on uh, during this treatment. At the same time, you know, it is a p private family to some degree, certainly when it comes to medical treatment. Um, you know, if you put, take the Princess of Wales, for instance, we know that she underwent abdominal surgery, surgery but we don't know any sort of details as to what that uh, included. So, yes, the fact that we don't know which kind of cancer or the kind of treatment suggests that they want to keep that part a little bit private. But, of course, it rings all kinds of alarm bells and saying, well, you know, if it's not that bad, why would you not share that with us? And I guess as journalists and just public uh, human nature, we start catastrophizing situations. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just being very, very measured in terms of what they feel comfortable uh, in sharing while realizing that certainly people would have been talking if Charles had stepped back from public duty. All right, Charlie, thank you. Thank you. We can report that King Charles III has now received his first round of treatment following his cancer diagnosis. And now his son is picking up some of his father's royal duties as a result of the king's health. Prince William returned to his royal duties for the fifth for the first time since his father's diagnosis. The Prince of Wales stepped away from his public responsibilities last month when his wife, Princess Kate, was hospitalized for abdominal surgery. For more on all of this, CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayeb joins us from London. MTS, always great to see you. Uh, so this is what a royal family is about, right? The king is out covering some medical, is medical issues. His, his eldest son is now taking his place. What role will Prince William take now while um, the, the king is recovering. Hey guys, good to be with you. Well look, the short answer is Prince William is going to keep calm and carry on, um, to, <laughs> to use a cliche, but we've seen him. He's now back at work uh, at that investiture uh, where he was handing out honors like an MBE, uh, member of uh, British Empire, Order of British Empire, which are honors given to people who excel, whether it's in sport or charity and that sort of thing. Uh, but I think the reality is, is we're going to have to see a lot more of Prince William. Um, he will be taking on responsibilities uh, for his father, uh, but also his wife. As you mentioned, Lana, he or she has been uh, recovering from abdominal surgery. She spent two weeks in hospital, so it's very clear whatever it was is relatively serious. Uh, but she's now at home, but we're not likely to see her back uh, out and about uh, doing royal duties until after Easter. And now with Prince Charles uh, receiving his first uh, uh, round, if you will, of cancer treatment, uh, it is likely that a lot of the responsibility will fall on Prince William, uh, as well as other senior members of the royal family, including Princess Anne. She's also known as one of the hardest working members of the royal family. She's also been out having four engagements just today alone. Guys. Well, one prince that is not going to be stepping into his father's responsibilities in the meantime, I understand, is Prince Harry. A lot of people talking about that very short meeting that he had. What are we learning about that first meeting between Prince yeah, Harry and very... King Charles? This is the first time that they actually met since the king's coronation, right? 
Yeah, very short meeting, only about 30, 45 minutes. Uh, but don't read too much into just how short that uh, meeting was. Uh, we have very uh, good or rather well-informed people who told us on the inside that uh, King Charles had just received his first uh, cancer treatment. He was feeling very tired. Uh, and uh, although it was a brief meeting, it was a very warm meeting. Uh, and one would imagine that Prince Harry will return to the UK at some point to visit with his father. Guys. All right. And you have Syed. Thank you very much.